President Biden is reaching out to the big middle of this country, the 65, 75, 85 percent of Americans who don't think our differences are too big to bridge as a country, who understand that there's a reservoir of common sense and decency in the American body politic and who want us to work together. As he said, he signed 300 bipartisan pieces of legislation in the first two years of office. We got more done in the last Congress, most of it with Republican votes, than the last 20 Congresses combined. I think Joe Biden uh, has had a very strong first two years in office. He's going to tell the American people what his plans are uh, for running again. So I'm going to let him uh, take the prerogative on that on that uh, on that statement. For me, the immigration and border security issues is extremely personal and important. And I hear President Biden make calls to really end the fentanyl crisis, but this administration has the power to do that, and they've actively chosen not to, and it's in my opinion because we see the largest voting minority in the country being Hispanic Americans, specifically those of Mexican descent, and that they're looking at the immigration topic and debate as a political tool of power. And so that to me was really disheartening to hear. What I will tell you is the one thing that I wish the media would really show is the side of President Trump. Mind you, I've also been, I think, a victim of, not saying that you guys are, but there are some people that use their platforms to more or less, I think, become activists instead of journalists. And so I just wish that people would show that policy perspective instead of trying to make politics, which exists on both sides, more of a Hollywood show when it shouldn't be. So I support President Trump. It's no exaggeration to say that this president and, this, and the Democratic Congress really move the ball forward uh, for the American people and especially for our veterans. I think he, I think, uh, uh, he is unifying like no other uh, Democrat, uh, Democratic uh, pot uh, potential candidate in, in the field. Um, and I think uh, he's, uh, his record gives a strong, strong I think uh, evidence, give strong evidence to uh, the voters in 2024 uh, of what he can accomplish if uh, he gets another four years and you give him a, a Congress he can work with. Well, looking on the plus side, I, I like that he wants to do something about fentanyl and uh, the, uh, checking up more and more what's coming across the border container-wise, but obviously if we're going to be really effective on it, we need to control the border because of all the the influx of people and mules and those that would be running that product through there. So it needs to be a complete job for one to actually do that because obviously we know how badly it's affecting American citizens and their health. It's, it's horrific what fentanyl is doing here. I want to be optimistic too that he and Kevin McCarthy can start working some things out of the immediate need. We have the uh, debt ceiling that has to be adjusted here. Our side's looking a little more for having some more limitations on spending because we can't keep going this way. We've gotten through the COVID period, which a heck of a lot of spending on that. And um, it wasn't, I don't think it was helpful that he wanted to make Republicans out to being uh, cutting Social Security and Medicare. That's not what we're talking about at all. But if we want to be realistic about it, we're going to have to look at when Social Security really hits the wall in about 2033, are we prepared to do things to help not have that happen at that point? with a real conversation, Republicans and Democrats constructively, instead of saying, ha, you want to cut Social Security by merely even bringing up that it needs to be looked at.